pressure has really hurt Canisius early. Big round of applause for Motieva Scrivas as he finds his way back in. The Lithuanian talented star who had a, a big summer. Wanted to make sure they got him back to 100%. He and Vesar, very important to this team. They don't ever really need to be out there together, especially with the rebounding ability of Townsend and Awaka. Are you here, seven footer? Krivas is a true seven footer. He might be seven, at least seven one. I think he's seven two. And right there, you saw him holding the ball high. That was the bugaboo for him last year. He would get the ball stripped a lot of times by smaller guys. They would come in, he would bring it down to his waist. Tommy Lloyd loves to work with big men, and you saw right there, took his time, got into the paint, nice job drawing the foul. This past summer, U20, FIBA in Europe, had some really big moments, did Krivas last year. He went to the line 63 times, and about 8 out of 10 he was successful, 78% free throw shooter. What do you like most about his game? Take away the height, what parts of the intangibles of his game do you like? I think it's all around. He's so good at everything. He can shoot the mid-range. He can shoot free throws. He's huge. He's really strong. He has nice post moves down low. Not afraid at all to bring it down low and use his size and physicality. He also can block shots. I mean, he can move. He's, he's better than you think when he comes out as a big man on a pick and roll. Nearly took that one away and a turnover forced. William Scott for Canisius pulls things back together. Fighting amongst themselves, and a wall was built. It was tough to slide through. Paul McMillan, the fourth, came up empty that time. Bradley's got seven points. Love has got seven. Del Orso to the freshman Brian as he fired that one into the corner. Tobey Awaka, the Tennessee transfer, will go to the line. Some of the new faces working out there right now. Carter Bryant, one of them, the talented freshman from Riverside, California. The Australian, Anthony Del Orso, who found his way here from Campbell. Now the guy they call Deli. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, the fans in Arizona are going to love Deli. He's going to have some big moments for this team. The other guy that has played incredible in the two exhibition games, Tobe Awaka, the guy shooting the free throw. Tobe, Mr. Awaka has been a monster, a man inside. And uh, you better bring it because he's he'll rebound. He hasn't been a big scorer when he was at Tennessee. Not a scorer. I think he's going to double his average this year in points. Yeah, he was interesting because he led Tennessee back-to-back -back years in offensive rebound percentage. Again, a metric where you dive a little deeper. When he was out there, he was the most effective Tennessee volunteer offensive rebounder. Limited time. Yeah, not surprised. But made the most of it. Can play both the five and the four. Talented Spaniard, Conrad Martinez. He's climbing up that depth chart a little bit. Now I know it's a big lead early, but a, a good chance for double nickels, as I like to call Conrad. Had some moments last year. 19 games, 17 points, 11 assists. Played about 14 minutes in the two exhibition games. I think Tommy Lloyd sees him as kind of a ninth, tenth guy come in. He's a, he'll change the energy, change the pace. Step back, Awaka bangs side to side into Krivas. Neither one of them end up with the basketball. I think that's the right word when you talk about Conrad, energy. Energy, oh yeah, ton of it. He likes to pick guys up full court. We saw other, other Arizona players already do. TJ McConnell recently, the, the great Arizona player under Sean Miller, talked about his superpower being his energy and garden guys at 90 feet picking them up, and that's what Martinez has done. Spaniard national team, FIBA U18, Euro championship for Conrad. Plays a little defense, makes William Scott Jr. take a run. He's got a JUCO transfer from Triton College. High school state champion, Akron, Ohio. Nice step inside the three-point arc, but a miss that time. Jasmine Senga, six points a game at Northridge last year. Senga did a, jo a good job there recognizing the clock where it was at, got it up quickly, just not able to convert. Bryant ran himself into trouble, gives up the basketball. And a whistle underneath. See Bryant, that play got pushed 
or got hit right around the hip area did nothing to him. He just, just basically ran right through that. You can see the strength of the freshman. And the freshman, Bryant, number nine for the Cats. Dad played college hoops at Long Beach State. High school coach now. This is a player that has been talked about a lot, a very bright future professionally, and he wants to sharpen that skill here. It's a good Perfect. place to develop. Perfect offense for him. Arizona with another chance. And that's a, that's a shot. I think Krivas finishes once he gets into game shape. Maybe just timing off a bit there. Motievas had a game last year. You may remember it. It was at Cal in 18 minutes, right after Christmas. He had 18 points, five boards, and all of a sudden, you're a couple of weeks into the season thinking this kid's going to be some sort of special, and now it's his time. Del Orso with the miss. And Awaka created that foul right there. He worked so hard under the glass. Krivas then has the size. So you're dealing with a 7-2 player then you got a walk that looks like an NFL defensive end this is this is a tough this is a Tommy Lloyd I said it he was a great GM this summer getting this team ready for the Big 12 and it's a mix now being a head coach at a power five conference especially in a conference like the Big 12 you are a little bit more like a professional GM Nice anticipation defensively. Anthony Bernard will go all the way against the freshman, and he'll go to the line. Got Carter Bryant to leave his feet. Nice play by Anthony. Yeah, a great job by him. The anticipation, he went into Bryant's body. Canisius with their hands full with the Arizona Wildcats, laying our eyes for the first time regular season. And they go to the line in this contest, and it's a miss from Anthony Bernard, the sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, went to Gross Point South High School. As he drops the second one in, transferring in from Mercer. 23-5. The Cats still have been a little bit quiet. Zero of their last five. No field goals in more than three minutes. Canisius has gone to sort of a 3-2 zone, 2-3 zone. It goes back into that 2-3 forcing Arizona. To probably go against a defense they have not seen yet, at least in the exhibition games. Successful defensive stand for the Griffins that time. Swatted into the first row. And a nice defensive try on the other end. Bryant was leaping through the air. Well, you just see there, McMillan, how high he, look at how high he has to throw this. And Bryant almost still gets it. He knew Bryant was behind him on the chase down block there. And good effort by McMillan. Just uh, really a difficult shot because of Bryant's presence. You watched that junior college documentary, that great show, Last Chance You. You saw the football. Then you saw the basketball. That's where Dylan Godfrey played. He was part of that East Los Angeles College. Newport Beach kid in Southern California. But 11.2 points a game, shot more than 50% from the floor while playing at quote-unquote last chance U. Yeah, that was great. I saw that. Great show. We literally, we literally, sorry to interrupt, have a hockey line change coming. Yeah. We're going to do a five for five. And, and Arizona can do that. We talked in the open about their depth. Martinez locks that one in. And that's what you do coming off the bench. You give them value on the defensive end. If you knock in a three, you're going to earn minutes. The triple from Conrad Martinez. Four points in a game against Colorado last year. A couple of assists and a steal against ASU last year. He's going to have more and more chances to infuse that energy into this team. Turnover forced. Five cats come on. Well, and that was my example of Krivos, the seven foot two center, doing a really nice job on that pick and roll. He showed right there, stayed under the free throw line, didn't come out, was not going to really contest that much, but he's, he's so long, it's tough for you to get a pass around him. Grivas sits down with a point in four minutes. Oh, one from the floor for Krivas, one of two from the line. We'll keep our eye on him throughout. Beautiful backdoor and a slice to the basket as KJ hammers that one home. That was all set up by the ball movement, changing sides of the floor. You get the defense moving. Textbook offense by Tommy Lloyd and that back cut. A team last year that was 10th in the country out of 362 in offensive rating.
Godfrey with five on the clock. There is a three for Dylan Godfrey. 19 six, times he had double digits last year. 6-8, but he can come out on the perimeter right there. That can cause some problems for a team. Look good on that jump. It slips through the hands of Vesar, but right there behind to clean it up was K.J. Lewis. That pass was not intended for him. K.J. does so much work on the baseline, in the paint. We saw him make that three early, but his athleticism, his instincts, he makes up for anything he does just because of his how hard he works. It needs to be mentioned, by the way, that Caleb Love has four assists already. He has those seven points. He got hot right out of the gates, but he's doled it out four times. And right there would have been, it's, I'm glad you brought that up, because that would have been a shot he might have taken right there on the break. But, you know, he dribbled it, passed it off, get it around. He knows it's going to come back most of the time. That was a balancing act and a good one from Trey Townsend to stay in bounds there. Bradley heads up streaking to the bucket. 32-10. They were quiet for about three minutes. Matt, sorry about that. Yeah. Now they're four of their last five. And Kanisha's starting to get a little rhythm on offense. They missed their last two threes, but they're getting better looks. There's Bradley on this one here. There's what you talked about, that great save. and Not all the time you get your point guard slashing to the rim like that. But he is so good around the basket. From New York, Coach Christian from New York, Long Island. Great guards, obviously, up in the state of New York. He played against some good ones, didn't he? He was talking about that before he, he mentioned this tournament that he played at when he was in high school called the Newsday Classic. He said, if you were from New York, you knew. You knew about that classic. They don't have it anymore, but Pearl Washington, Mark Jackson, huh. Kenny Smith. <laughs> I mean, the crew. Oh, Henry. He just doesn't play seven feet sometimes. It's shocking. And I mean less than that. Athletic. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Really skilled. We talked to Tommy Lloyd, you and I, about just some of the guys. Here it is right there taking all the way. You're going to stop the ball. He has no problem taking it in. And pretty fearless as a big man. But Tommy Lloyd was saying one of the guys he thought that really paid attention to the details. So important. We talk about these high-level teams. And you know, trying to win in the margins. That's the area that, look, Arizona, you know, win a ton of games this year, but can you win in the margins? Can you win those little things, the details that add up to something like a Final Four? It's funny with Henry. He was very open about his appeal to being recruited by Tommy Lloyd. He said, bit of an introvert. That's who I am. And once I commit to you, that's perfect. He said, Tommy gave me my space. Let me decide that this was the right fit. Other coaches checked in with me every day and he was honest that was unappealing to me Tommy confidently checked in about once a week I find that you know how it worked for Henry that give credit yeah. to Lloyd to knowing how to deal with it though absolutely <laughs> you, <laughs> you kind of think of that you know when you're younger you have that parts of this team one main returnee the heartbeat of this program is Caleb Love yeah and one returnee but kind of a new part that's the catch and shoot that he really worked on this year instead of trying to dribble too much or make something happen. Now, if he dribbles, he gets to the rim and he's really good at it. You see the new hairdo, you see the new number. It's kind of the new Caleb Love and you mentioned the assist. So a guy that's facilitating and scoring, maybe just not, not in a ton of different ways, but slightly nuanced. He's been looking forward to a game that counts again. Closing his season, obviously his entire team wanted to to play deeper. Love has been excited and driven by the end of his season to open this one up, and he's playing like a man who's driven by that. He, he is, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to say something. You know, he was maligned a little bit for his last game of the year. You know, did not shoot it well. 0 for 9 from 3, and a lot of it fell on him, and he was the guy, right? He was the player of the year in the Pac-12, but if you really look at what they did last year in the tournament, the rest of the starting five was 2 of 14. So it was a combination of every single guy on the team not shooting well. It was not just Caleb Love. Now, he'll admit it wasn't his best game, and he needs to approve on it. That's why he's changed his game just slightly for this year. Beautiful movement of the basketball. That's confidence. You're talking about Canisius finding a bit of it. 
Paul McMillan, the fourth, the son of Avian Paul, with the three pointer. Dad played some hoops at Loyola, Chicago. We're just talking about you, number one. Just talking about you. Caleb Love with the triple. That's 10 points. On cue, and again, catch and shoot. Not trying to do too much. He had the look. I think if he was guarded, he wasn't going to try to make too much happen. He'd facilitate, but it was open. Not going to come out on him. He'll drain it. It definitely is a quiet assassin approach. You can sense that with him. It's not an over-celebration at all. I, I, I like that. I like the quiet assassin approach. I called him the mini mini Mamba last year. And, That's perfect. You know, he was, as I said in the exhibition, he was kind of the mini king snake in the exhibitions, being pretty laid back. But he's a Mamba. Don't get it wrong. He's the alpha of the is an easy way about him this year not trying to do too much jealous of a couple of nil deals i gotta admit stealing <laughs> penetration pretty paul mcmillan suddenly is flexing just a little bit like he belongs that's seven points for mcmillan yeah he's he's a nice player because he's kind of a guard forward he can play both ways he gets to the rim we saw him make a nice move earlier finish that one the australian elevates as he goes to the bucket anthony del orso deli ball as they like to call it when he gets hot 20 points a game at Campbell last year. That's right, 20 points a game. And in two years for the Campbells, scored 1,100 total points. Yeah, I have a good friend that plays, actually, for uh, UNC Wilmington, and he texted me and said, hey, has Delhi been giving it to these guys like he gave it to us <laughs> last year? And he, he gave it to people. Like, he was in the 30s several times, in the 20s. He was a prolific scorer. And so, you know this, like, guys changing teams. You think of, like, free agents in baseball or football, and their position's not going to change, but the role does. And I think his position, Delis does, changes again on this team. He's not going to be asked to score 20 or shoot it like he did last year. How does he react to the role? And, he, and so far, so good. Yeah, he had 20 or more points 21 times there. He had 33 times in a Division I game. Yeah, that's... Kind of a slight frame, lean, really bouncy athletic player. 554. So they head into the locker room here in the first half. Yeah. Defensive stand. Nothing there on the other end for McMillan. Nice stop, KJ Lewis. Delhi nearly traveled that time. Lewis ends up with it one more time, but doesn't get the home bounce. I thought Awaka might come down with it, take a dribble, try to get it closer to the rim. But what a rebound by Awaka there. Shoulders that go on forever when you're talking about Tobe Awaka. Canisius is, is playing better. You can see the nice cut right there. They found the open man. Just next step, knocking it in. Along the baseline. Diving hard for the basketball. Official takes a tumble. Canisius takes a tumble. KJ's on the hardwood as well. That are getting the, on the floor in the Big 12, baby. Different style of play. You kidding me? Houston, and Iowa State, Baylor, Texas Tech, Kansas. Jim Christian knows how to get on the floor. TCU, they're all waiting. Oh, yeah. Eight teams last year from the Big 12 played in the tournament. If you want to be creative and butter knife Arizona and Colorado win, that's 10 that would have made it if you add them to this year. Four from what was previously known as the Pac-12. Eight from the Big 12, four from the Pac-12 to the tournament. And that 20, it's a different world. And that 20 game brutal schedule, that's going to be brutal. Those away places are as good as anywhere in the country. Great, I say great, just terrific Big 12 fans. That one rings in and out. Awaka tries to fight, does not crawl over the back for the bucket. There were times last year, I don't want to beat this too much up. Beautiful slice and an extra ball fake by William Scott, and it paid off for the Ohio man. Yeah, bad defense there by Arizona. But again, Kanisha's getting a little more comfortable with things. Deli roll drops that one home. Del Orso with the triple. 
can see his size enables him to score and shoot threes because he can just shoot over most wing defenders. Delarso's got five points in six minutes. Awaka's got a couple of points and four rebounds in eight minutes. Jaden Bradley's got nine points in 11 minutes. Some of the numbers for the Cats. Just to quickly to finish the thought. If you think about what it meant playing within this conference last year, a win within the conference sometimes meant less than playing out of conference. Pretty crazy. So West Miller's Cincinnati team right there yeah. down the list. Welcome to the Big 12, Arizona oh, yeah. basketball fans. It is a brave new world. Let's watch Carter Bryant play for just a bit, see how he posts up the freshman. Along the baseline, nothing there. Del Orso turns it over. It's a chance to see him go to work. Carter Bryant. Out of her side, California McDonald's All-American. Yeah, the dunk was pretty easy, but I love the defensive pressure right there coming up on his guy right there. And it's going to be fun to watch him. We're going to have a lot of good stuff on him in the next couple games. Non-conference. He is, he is a star in the waiting. He is right there. He just he makes the game look easier. We're, we're so easy. We're talking about Sean Elliott. I didn't play exactly like Sean. I played with Elliott. But his size, his length, the ease of the game, and the ease of the way he deals with the game reminds me a little bit of Sean. Is that Shaquilla played volleyball in Arizona from 2011 to 2013, was an outside hitter for the Wildcats, so he's familiar certainly, and it was the right fit. He had a growth as Krivas comes back on, just to finish the thought on the freshman, where he went from like three offers to three times 30 offers his junior year. That one banged home, Jasmine Senga. Chasing his master's degree, by the way, in sports administration. How about Senga with a little little Luka Doncic over his head, kind of cocked it back a little bit, and. Nice jumper from three. He's represented different provinces. He is a Canadian athlete as Townsend will go to the line. You see they double Krivas right there, which a lot of teams will have to do. It was so easy for him to pass out of the double. Like, like literally no problem because of the size. Canisius, you will see other teams will have more size, but that size is great in the double team. From Oxford, Michigan, trade Townsend. Shot 78%, went to the line 200 plus times last year while playing for Oakland as he misses the first. In his career at Oakland, this was a 50% field goal shooter, 50%. Scoring more than 1,800 points. Pure Michigan. Comes up 0 for 2 that time. He won't miss. Back-to-back -back free throws very much straight down. No, he was an 80, almost 80%, as we mentioned, and he'll be fine at the line. Townsend, the son of Nicole and Skip. His brother Zach plays college soccer at Oakland. Had a recent goal against Wright State. Just want to make sure the family yes. feels included. Got to throw that in. Nice research. A former walk-on. How cool is that? I love that part. Somehow they got him out of... Oakland University, right? somehow, everybody else stays and plays there. How about that role for Canisius? Well, McMillan shot that before he really landed. He got on it, he landed, but he shot it so quick and so high. He's got some interesting game. He's got a, lot of, a lot of different shots to him. Paul's got nine points. He, he almost slows down. This is kind of the new, and then that little step back creates the separation, but shoots it so quickly and so high. That's what enabled him to get it up. His last five games last year, while averaging eight on the season, he averaged 17 a game. He raced into the offseason, so that had to help his confidence for this year. Yeah, no doubt. And he's one of the most experienced on this team, so you got to believe he's out there thinking, hey, somebody's got to kind of take control here. Grievous with those 19 blocks, third on the team last year. Second on his squad last year, an offensive rebound percentage to Mr. Ballo. He okay. was second. He was right behind him. 
I mean, who doesn't love a good offensive rebound? Show of hands. <laughs> Going to need him in the Big 12. You'll miss some shots every once in a while. They may be playing a couple of seven-footers. Is that what's going to happen here? Let's see. Right, we are going to see it. Okay. And Townsend will sit. We'll play a couple of seven-footers. This is the first time tonight. This is fun. Now, we saw that in Tommy's first year. He would have Christian Coloco yes. at center. Tabellus at the four, and they were gigantic. Rivas is 7'2", Vesar 7 feet tall. Bradley up over his shoulder. Don't know if Henry meant to, but he did, and they'll count it for that reason. Now, almost, almost just batted it in and out of his hands. Now, I want to see what the two 7-footers do on defense. Let's see how they cover smaller guys. Do they spread? There he is. Look at Krivas out denying at the logo. See how he does here on this little drop coverage. Not bad. Then he switches over. Pretty good coverage, but Luka Doncic is getting hot. Luka. Luka, the talented comedian, Jasmine Senga. Nice pass. Pocket pass there by Bryant. Senga with the three. Garden City Community College, also Pensacola State. Bucket a moment ago. The freshman with a nice little bounce pass. An easy little play. Kind of you know, would have gotten a, the assist there. I think so many guys on this team, this Arizona team, are guys that'll get an assist, but they'll, they're also connectors. They'll, they'll throw it to the guy that will get the assist, and that's what make Tom, makes Tommy's offense so special. This team has 16 field goals tonight. Tommy Lloyd's squad. Not only those 16 field goals, but they have 11 assists of their 16 that they have passed around. A good shot of Tommy with Jack Murphy, his associate head coach, Steve Robinson. Long time, so much experience, one of his assistants. Well, speaking of the Big 12, all they have to do is turn to Coach Robinson all his time at Kansas. Yes. With Roy Williams at Carolina. There's Jack Murphy. T.J. Benson, the new coach that's been called up, got promoted, doing a great job for them. Utah, TCU, Iowa State, Houston, Kansas all rolling tonight in Big 12 play. Oklahoma State's the only one that has their hands full. One of their alums, Doug Gottlieb, who took over that job at Green Bay, has taken Green Bay to where he used to play his college basketball. They got a one-point game in that one. Green Bay, Oklahoma State, a one-point game. That is wild that his first game That's, is again is against his alma mater. That means he didn't burn any bridges. I mean, that is wild. You're looking at this right here, by the way. I'm not sure what they were looking at. Maybe somebody's. Kind of the out of bounds, but it looked like it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Looks like it rolled down Bryant's shoulders too as he took a tumble. Do we have a game? Is this tonight Baylor at Gonzaga? Is that, I think, later on tonight on ESPN? Yeah, that's, that would be later on. Woo, okay. Let's finish this one up in, in time just to catch that, most of that. That's yeah. going to be good. Baylor Gonzaga, Central Florida squeaked by Texas A&M. We'll get an explanation. Camp Lisi, flagrant one, Polisi. The redshirt sophomore from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Matt's getting an explanation. What they share with you? Well, it was basically two hands in the back. You called it when he was going up for that rebound. And if you get a flag where one, obviously, you're looking for anything excessive, unnecessary, or just too much. And we didn't really see the second part of it there, but. The soft touch of Bryant. Ryan had 13.6 of 8 from the floor against Point Loma in the exhibition. They don't count, but we were learning watching him. He won that dunk contest in the red-blue game. There's Polisi. Valparaiso a couple of years ago played for this program last year. 
Yeah, nice win in the Big 12 for Central Florida. They beat Texas A&M, 13th ranked Texas A&M, by three earlier today. That is a good A&M just now gone from the Big 12 to the SEC. Yep, Cincinnati scored 109 in a win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Wow. 14 feet of man <laughs> finally pull it together. We'll try and get a couple of free throws out of it. <laughs> Well, again, shots that I think both of those guys are probably a little disappointed they missed. But to your point, Sut, the length inside. I mean, we can talk all day long about effort and toughness. I mean, if you're seven two and seven feet, my goodness, like that's a, and you mentioned four. That's a legit fourteen. <laughs> that's not thirteen nine, thirteen no, no. eleven. That's fourteen plus. Yeah, fourteen two unofficially. Krivas drops it in. Otievas played for Zalgiris, second division Lithuanian basketball. Led his team in rebounding and blocks. His international play. Look, at, at 16, he was playing up on a U19 team against the Julius Tubelas, Ben Matherin. He was playing up in that event. So he's been challenging himself for a long, long time, and now he will sit. You know what I loved about that play, though, was Panisius was in a zone. And they, and they got it to Vesar, but it was so easy for him to look over the defense. He was going to dump it down to Krivas. They blocked that, so he just took it to the rim. And Brian hit the hardwood, some full court pressure there. They go really small right here. They put Townsend at the five and Carter Bryant at the four. It's their defensive team. They can switch everything. That's what they do in the shot clock, just switch every single ball screen. Way up with it quickly. Kudos to Canisius. Four of their last four from the hardwood to take themselves into the locker room. Now a very comfortable lead for Arizona in the first half. But again, the Griffins, four for their last four before they go into the locker room. Canisius goes in, shooting 40% of the first half. The Arizona Wildcats, 46. Hang with us. Half he was the, the star for both exhibition games. Did not have a big half in the numbers and the stats. See what he does in the second half. Great play out of the halftime by Jim Christian. So that's now six of their last six from the floor. Dating back as the triple is dropped in there. Dylan Godfrey with the three. And Lewis will go to the line as he floats into the paint. J just a little thing there. But Caleb Love gets the pass on the, on the swing pass there. He had to look for three. Was a little outside the line. But past that over to K.J. Lewis, and that's just, again, I think just a little more facilitation from him this year. We're seeing it. Grew up in El Paso, Texas. And as we mentioned, spent some elementary school time living with dad here in Tucson. I know his pops, great guy. Used to go to his stepsister's volleyball. His stepsister's a great volleyball player. Played at Micah Mountain here in Tucson. Ended up at Duncanville High School playing his prep years in El Paso, Texas. I think one of the more parts, more unique parts about that 10 year old drawing that's gone viral everywhere when he's talking about being an Arizona commit at 10 years old was just a simple sentence remember my name. Put it down at 10. Well, we do know that's your cool. name now, and you're wearing that uniform. Hey, manifesting it, right? Powerful. That was Dale and Terry had a similar story. Wearing that Wildcat uniform, it is like eighth grade birthday or something. Beautiful step back with one more pass, lit on the bucket though, and a miss by Tanakopa. The LIU transfer from Australia. Pretty tough drive right there. You were Townsend. looking for him in the second yeah. half, and here he is. Yeah, he made it. You know, I don't think he was really initially thinking, hey, I'm just going to drive it to the rim, but he was trying to make something happen. He got really pushed around and just bounced off of that physicality, easy layup. Those are his first two points in this game. Remember, he had 42 combined points in the two exhibition games. Yeah, no one even close to that from Arizona. Copa finds Scott. That one's well off the mark. Wheeling and dealing and taking advantage of the open look off the glass. He earned it, Jaden Bradley. I'll say it again. One of the better players in the country once he gets his feet in the lane. He has so many shots 
and different ways to finish. Footwork is great sometimes. He really is an interesting, unique player in the lane and, and effective. He picked a lot of his brother. His brother's a big part of his game, talking about Jaden. Played small college basketball at a school called Faulkner in Montgomery, Alabama. He gives so much credit to where he is now for his big bro. Nearly got a great roll, but Awaka gets tied up as he grabs the rebound underneath. Strong. Open the season with confidence. There's been a, a ton of winning under his leadership. I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. 88 and 20 in his first three years. 88 and 20. Let alone opener domination. Beautiful touch underneath. Jaden Bradley takes advantage. Caleb Love, fifth assist. Well, it, it, we've we've seen now a complete reversal. A couple years ago, Kirk Kreisa was a guy that never really shot inside the, the three-point line. Last year, Kylan Boswell a little bit, and now we're seeing Jaden Bradley. He's a guy that likes to work inside the paint as a point guard. Penetration bucket. McMillan continues a really, really good night. It's been fun watching him work. He's got 13 now. Yeah, he's been their best player, and a lot of that's just been some one-on-one -on -one and pretty stylish play. Rings in and out of Waka. Thank you very much. I'll clean this one up. Tobe with the follow jam. A walk is a bad boy, Darren. That is a bad boy out there, man. He is. He can bring it. Yikes. He's got four points. He's got seven rebounds. That is a bad man. That, is, that guy, that is good. He's going to be fun to watch in the Big 12. Tanakopa drops a triple in there. He had 20 points four times when he played at LAU. An empty possession this time for the Cats. And the line went up and make things interesting, and that'll do it. Paul McMillan, the fourth, with the bucket. They crawl to within 20. Yeah, give McMillan a ton of credit. Give this Clinicius team a lot of credit. On offense, they have really turned the corner after the first 10 minutes. Couple of tough bounces. Oh, for his last couple of long distance shots there for Love. One more three, a short. See Canisius now sending no one to the offensive glass. Just getting back on defense. I think that's a great move by coach. Anthony Bernard whistled for the foul just a moment ago. Tobe Awaka, an offensive rebounding machine. Get used to this in Tucson this year. Then the game everyone is waiting for, the Duke game here in Tucson. Arizona won that Duke game back there last year in Cameron. We're in love again with Caleb, who drops in a three. And again, a lot of assists shared in this game. He's got 13 points. Caleb's got five assists as well. That triple for Caleb Love. I'll tell you one guy who looks forward to the Duke game, Caleb Love. Played at Carolina. He played some incredible games at Cameron. Jaden Bradley maintains control. Townsend eyes Henry underneath. Caleb streaking to the bucket. Rolls it off the window. Easy play for him right there. Easy little pump fake. Didn't have to sell it that much because he was so wide open. And then his finish is good. as I think he's as good as anyone in the country at the two guard finishing. KJ ends up with that one hip pocket and he'll go to the line. Takes a spin out in front of his bench. It's funny watching Caleb Love play. He works like he's in fifth gear, but the whole mind and follow through are almost as if he's in third gear. Never seems to be panicked or as if he's putting his fed foot on the metal, but he is. Well, and I think that's even more so this year. It's a good observation by you because I didn't see that a couple years ago at Carolina. I saw it more last year, and I think it's even become more pronounced this year. Do you remember a certain point? You had a thousand point career. You played with great players. Can you remember certain spurts in your career or teammates' careers where you either slowed it down so much so that you surprised yourself or watched teammates do the same? 
Definitely. There, and there were levels to that. I remember my second year just in the red blue thinking, okay, I got this a little bit. Kenny Lofton is not guarding me for thank God. And I'm not worried about him stripping it from me. I feel like I can handle it. Like just that alone is a, is a level. And then you keep going from there. Nice. Nice there by Copa. Tanakopa continues to add to what has been a good, nice little run. He's got nine points. His team is doing good things. Certainly a positive Copa. And there is an answer as that one swatted away. K.J. Lewis anticipated. Yeah, he's going to be, he's going to have, I'm predicting, at least as he finishes right there. He, that's, I don't know if that's one for the season. I predict he has at least double figures in chase down blocks. Lewis has 14 points to go along with four rebounds. 70-44 is the score. Yeah, it's just with Caleb Lumber, it's that unique gear. He is flying, flying, but you never know. Gotta That's what to, I heard. Got to go to Ben's down there. Jim Christian and his, his crew knew where to go. The president is actually here and ended up at Ben's. But, you know, there's so many good places down there. No anchovies, Frog and Fergan. You, you, know, you know my spot. Is? Dirtbags. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're back in the A, you're going to Dirtbags for sure. All of them pretty good. I give Dirtbags credit. They opened up a location yeah. in enemy territory right there in Phoenix. I heard that. Streaking through enemy territory and stopping the defense dead in their tracks is K.J. Lewis. And he's got 14 points. Lewis with 14 points, four rebounds, three dimes as well. Let's see Vasar here with the point guard. Bernard, good job. Henry's hanging in there. Now you see Krivas. Was he going to switch that? Good job there by Love. Conrad Martinez to Mr. Love. Just a little bit firm off the glass. And Krivas grabbed by the arm there by Anthony Bernard. I actually think Love wanted him to shoot that. And, and, and Martinez honestly was too unselfish on that play. And Love wasn't really, I mean, still should have finished, but wasn't expecting the back pass. Martinez with a bit of time in the first half. Dropped down a triple when he was on the hardwood. Spots up. Short. Caleb with a miss. Three of eight from distance now. Six of 14 from the floor. 15 points for Caleb. A seven foot plus wall out front. Asar and Kriva so tough. On the other end, Caleb Love adds to his tally. Bangs that one off the glass. He's got 17. That was the toughest shot he took in the last three. Those are the ones that He's so good at making right there. Through contact. Pac-12 player of the year. Led Arizona Love did last year and scoring as he grabs that rebound. Three point field goals made, free throws made. Led his team in all of those. Thank you very much. Shuffling those feet. Busy underneath. Krivots with a pair. Uh, and, and that was textbook because first love. So many guys these days don't pass it ahead. They try to dribble it. He passed it ahead to Lewis. Lewis with the great look inside and Krivots knew what to do with it. So it's the, the way connector. they run it. You called those the, players the connectors. That's right. The connectors right there is beautiful. Martinez challenged defensively and taking advantage was McMillan. Nice game for him, right? He's got 18 points. Jeez. A couple of assists, a couple of rebounds. An air ball that time for Martinez. 30-point Arizona lead. Give me another chance for double nickels as he brings the basketball up. Well, look at the no-look pass from Caleb Love. Krivas takes it home. Oh, baby, that was pretty. Yeah, he saw that coming out of his peripheral vision. He knew before he caught the ball that was going inside. Great Six shot. assists.
Well, the Mini Mamba last year knew how to do this, but this is the part of the game. I think he's being a great teammate. And some selflessness a little bit to be creative. Seats that are experiential right there next to where all the action's going on. Well, the, the seats I can't afford, but I think you can set some, some, big, <laughs> some big donors there. But that's pretty cool. You know, they, they call them the Hollywood seats, and they sit. Look at how close they are to the coaches. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do that on the other side pretty soon. And it reminds me, really, of all the NBA teams. I mean, everybody does it at this point in the NBA. They used to call that, when I played in Vegas, the Gucci Row. Oh, so that was uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen something like that, other than the Lakers from the '80s and what was it, Diane Cannon and Jack Nicholson, of course Nicholson and the whole deal. So pretty pretty cool marketing there by Matt King, their new president of operations. Yeah, Matt's done a great job. Part of just being a little bit thoughtful, putting things together. Matt, the president of basketball ops. You sit down there by Tommy and Jack and Steve and TJ and Rem. You just learn. And when that man hops out of his seat and he's got something to say, you're going to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> do they have to sign an NDA? Good good point by you. Can't repeat. I don't think they do. That's that's part of the fun, right? That's what you're paying for. You can hear it all. Just about at the 10-minute mark. Again, a chance to watch Carter Bryant play some. Godfrey clears himself and gets a kind roll on the road. Well, he did a good job looking at the real clock because the student section <laughs> had him believing it was about to go off three seconds earlier. He's got 10 points to Godfrey, by the way. Three field goal makes, two of two from the line. The big fella couldn't force the issue. Martinez, little touch pass to Bryant. Strong off the backside. Love's got 17, Bradley 13, Lewis 14. See if the Cats can restore order. Del Orso. Stop short. The attempt is short. And Canisius will bring it back the other way. Griffin shooting 41%. That'll drop down after the miss. Cats 48% in this contest. They're at the point in their last 230. Nobody can make a shot right What's going now. on here, Mulebach? A little sloppy. Lace up those sneakers. Get out First there. game. Now you wonder a little, a little tired just because games are so much different than practice or exhibition games. Everything falling short right now for both teams. Wisconsinite Pelesi from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Missed that. The quietness. <laughs> 78-50, the Cats are in a, a three-minute quiet spell now and counting. Well, what do you do when that happens? Move the ball a little bit. Get it moving around side to side. Ball screen right here. Open ball screen. Couldn't find Townsend. Tried to dump it inside. Shot clock under 10. They find Townsend that time with a lob. But it's taken out of his hands. Little Euro step and a shot block. Tommy Lloyd seen enough of this, bringing out your, your line change as you talked about earlier. Line change, stopping the clock. Cats have been quiet. It's been about three and a half minutes. Meantime, they still hold a 28-point lead. Didn't see a ton of the injury. You could see the timing was off a bit. And I'm sure that I think, you know, just like I mentioned, Vasar, I think learned a lot last year by sitting on the bench with his injury the entire season. I think it helped him. I really think it helped Grievous a little bit. Just get some perspective, watch guys work out. What does he have to work out? I think it'll be a good thing in the long run. Alessi with four points, couple of free throws, two of two from the line. Eight of 10 on the game, just 10 times to the line for Canisius. Del Orso caught that one on the run, but couldn't convert. 
And they get Brian in a little bit aggressive that time, trying to swipe that one away. They'll hang a foul on him. Second personal foul on Bryant. Bryant with four points and a rebound as well. One of three from the floor for young Carter Bryant. Top 20 recruit in the United States. Everyone talking about what could be next in the coming years for Bryant. Godfrey awaiting that one and took advantage. Beautiful pass and penetration. The Newport Niche native with the, the triple. And you can give him 13 points. And also give Bernard credit there. Great penetration. They've been really good tonight on penetration kick is where they've, they've had a lot of their points from. Baseline finding Del Orso. Townsend tries to grab the rebound. Townsend a couple of points, six boards tonight in this game. He'd love to add about six more points to his resume, the transfer from Oakland. You can see now how far Canisius is just really spreading Arizona out. They feel like they can get a little more find the seams, go pick and roll with Bernard. He's done a nice job with that. Something to build on if you're Jim Christian. Your squad has held one of the top offensive teams in the country the last few years to zero points in almost a five-minute run now. Yeah, they, they've, they have really played a lot better from that first 10 minutes, which not surprising, but again, remember this team, 11 new guys. very quickly Anthony Bernard with like three him. points I like him he's I think he's gonna lead this team really well this year Canisius drawing a whistle that time I believe it was Evan Vanderplas from the Netherlands Vanderplas another guy is gonna have a good year there's the there's the Bryant layup That step through there, so many guys use. And he's going to be fun to watch, just his progression with everything, just you know, how he fits, what his role is. You got a potential first round pick right now coming off the bench. Like, you know, and it's, I think he understands it because he's got a lot of guys in front of him with experience, and he's, right now, he's going to play a ton. We know that, but. Del Orso has not had his best night. He's going to have a lot of really big nights for Arizona. Just some shots not falling. And one of nine, as you were mentioning, from the floor. Perfect four of four. Arizona's been to the line 24 times. They've made 18, shooting 75%. Last year, they shot 72%. They want to improve upon that because they go to the line a lot. One tops in the nation last year. Turnover. Cats bringing it back the other way. Bradley takes that one home. How fast was that in transition? And he, and he got to the lane so quickly. And again, using that footwork, kind of a funky game inside. It's so effective. I mentioned it carefully. Tommy will probably get mad for me, quote unquote, jinxing things. But the Cats forced their 16th turnover a moment ago. Arizona with just five turnovers. That's a big positive. That is, because they've been a team that runs so much. Allows him for the little finger roll. That's a crazy low number, five for your opener. Crazy number. Points off a of turnover, 23 to five. Cats with an advantage. Well, remember last year, KJ Lewis and Jaden Bradley, they barely ever turned the ball over, and they were coming off the bench. KJ, a freshman, Bradley. Oh. Basar not taking too kindly, being grabbed on his way to the bucket by Jasmine Sanga. Stepped right back, nose to nose. Separating. These they guys. double tee him up. Is that what occurred? I think. I wonder if they're going to go look at it right now, just to see, or maybe to your point, I think they're going to look at it.
Well, he got him so high up in that shoulder area. And whenever you get up around the head area, you know, not really making a play for the ball there. And as I mentioned, the main words there, and I, I'll, I'll run it by our video guy, right? Un excessive, unnecessary, or too much. And that felt close. The intent, you watch the intent, and then it just kind of peeled out of control. You could see Sanga reached for the basketball. Initially, But then right. he didn't get the basketball, and it was shoulder. And I guess the reaction we're going to ask of an athlete in that setting, you can do it. You played at this level. It's just to immediately take your hands completely off. Yeah, I kind of got him high up on that shoulder, especially when he was in the air. And I think that might lead them to conclude it was a flagrant one. The other thing that looks kind of odd about that, Sut, is Basar's a seven-footer. So if they'd done that to me, it probably would have been, you know, a smaller guard. It doesn't look as odd and, and, and maybe look as bad. Yeah, he kind of grabbed him back pretty, pretty hard there. I don't, like you say, it wasn't anything really. Is that a flagrant two? Wow. Wow. Okay. There you that's... go. You're going to get an explanation right now. Explaining things to Matt now, this officiating crew. What'd you learn, doctor? Yeah, both players with technicals, but it was a flagrant two. I did not see that coming. And when you go to flagrant two, so, you know, it's brutal, harsh, or severe. I'm not sure I saw that on that play. It seemed to me like a no-brainer flagrant one because he got up in the neck in the sort of shoulder area. But I don't know. I, I probably would have had flagrant one on that. I tend to agree with you. And I think what you look at as Vesar missed the first, and, and you can see it. It's a look in the eye of an athlete that yeah. takes on the other athlete, looks at the shoulder, grabs the shoulder. He reached for the basketball initially, clearly missed it. Yeah, yeah. And then did not pull his hands back, did not let the athlete go. And so I think, I don't think the intent was to grab the shoulder. That's to me where you throw him out. And again, using that vernacular, excessive is the word that comes to mind. But it's up to us to learn, too, and you to learn, the viewers, and what they see is important. Ryan lines up a three and comes up empty. Again, most importantly, what the officials have been told to do and what they see is way more important than our or your opinion. Sure. But I, I, tend, to, I tend to agree. Scott comes up empty. <laughs> Tobe, <Waka. laughs> get out of my way. Says Tobe Awaka. Tobe Awaka, by the way, from Hyde Park, New York. He is fun to watch. He just. <laughs> he played in the Bronx, did Awaka. Played his high school basketball at Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. Was New York's Gatorade Player of the Year. I'm trying to think of an Arizona player that they have had like that in a while. I, I can't think of one. You know, that type of enforcer type, defensive-minded, rebounding-minded, he will get better, I think, offensively this year and have more of a role in that area. But let's face it, he can flat-out de defend, and he's going to be aggressive in the paint. A little opportunity for Grant Whiteman to, to get into this contest and go to work. Grant Whiteman, the fifth-year player from Tucson, Arizona. Good opportunity. He's got four minutes for a That's while. exactly right, my that, friend. Penetration. And the bucket. That's some serious minutes for a walk-on. Now, Grant's a very good walk-on. He's shown that in a number of games here in Tucson. That, he better get ready here. He's got to have some shots coming up. Yeah, this is his 46th game in his career. He's got 11 overall points. He has seen some time. And Caleb Love may be watching the rest of this one. From the bench, 17 points, six assists. We'll talk about one other key stat, but he joins this illustrious group of All-Americans. Incredible group. Hunter Dickinson, another Big 12 player, a couple players out of the SEC. I love Sears. He is incredible. R.J. Davis back at Caleb's old school. And 
Cooper Flag going to be in here in McHale Center. What was the date for that set? Is that November 22nd? That sounds right, the 22nd. He, he did not turn the ball over tonight either. A six assists, no turnovers. Woo! By the way, I saw Cooper Flag play. I happened to be in Vegas when the United States men's team was there and mm -hmm, got mm -hmm. a chance to go watch practice, saw him play, and that was, uh, that was, I, I couldn't believe what I saw. I'll just leave it at that. One of my favorite Matt Muehlbach lines, it gets uttered often, I happen to be in Vegas. It's funny how that works out. <laughs> oh, yeah. McMillan's been nice, huh? This is about 20 points should he drop this one in. A 20-point night against one of the top teams in the country. He has had, this is, this is one of those, you got to save the tape for many reasons. you got to save it for the, uh, you know, for, forever. That's the kind of tape you, you bet. take and really do something with and get a chance to play overseas. They did New Jersey Institute of Technology. As they get wrapped up underneath. Talked about Paul McMillan, the fourth. At 25 last year against Ball State in Eastern Michigan. And it's been a special night for him tonight. By the way, I was in Vegas for a volleyball tournament. Which I know you just happened to be in Vegas. A lot of volleyball. I've, I've done the parenting thing at, at, at in Vegas for soccer, for baseball, for everything. So it, it has are, become the mecca. I have happened to be in Vegas before as well. <laughs> All right, good opportunity to see Addison Arnold play. Whiteman's in there as we talked about earlier. Liam Lloyd gets a chance to go to work. Liam number 11 on that jersey. And of course, the, the very studied veteran, Will Manaw, who we have enjoyed for many years from Catalina Foothills High School, Tucson native. Last Fun. couple of years, Will's played in 13 games. Oh, yeah. And, and fun to see Liam Lloyd get some, some PT. He had a, what an oblique muscle issue and uh, missed both exhibition games. You know, he's a walk-on out there. What a move right there. Addison Arnold. We saw Ad Arnold have a really nice game the other night. Yeah, great story at high school games of 35 and 42 points at Royal High School in Simi Valley. Lloyd saying, wait a minute, I got the basketball. Come on now. Now, Liam, when you look back at his journey, there's been some big moments in his time. Last year at Northern Arizona, played in 31 games, started 30 games, averaged six. He's had 16 points three times in his career in a, in a D1 game. A little I mean, further on this depth chart, though. Yeah, yeah and he said, he, it is a great quote. He said, this is a different beast. But playing at <laughs> GCU, NAU, like you said, he was a starter on D1 teams putting up numbers. I think he shot like 155 threes last year. So he wasn't just coming in and filling up some space out there. His dad, head coach, watching closely by the Hollywood seats. He's not anywhere near his bench. <laughs> He's watching these players get rewarded and get playing time. Grant Whiteman bangs it off the window. I'll tell you what, these walk-ons come in and play hard. They are not coming in just to satisfy the fans and shoot some threes. They are getting after it on the defensive end. All of the first teamers, they're all standing I and watching. That. That's, all, that's a great All point. standing and watching. They know how hard these players work. Great point, yeah. nice a shot. Triple there. from Cam Pelesi. That's seven points for Cam. Richard sophomore transferred in from Valparaiso. Two minutes. Chasing 100 points. Oh, nice pass. Will, can he get up there? Can he get hold of the basketball? He lost it that time. Well, Will Manaz guy, I mentioned this in the other exhibition. He's gotten a lot better. You think of who he has to guard every day. That's been a real pain the last couple of years for him, I'm sure. <laughs> and everyone here wants Liam to jack one up. Liam played at Gonzaga Prep while dad was busy coaching. Family lived up there. Liam scored more than 1,000 points in his career. And then there's Big Will. 8.6 rebounds in 21 minutes last couple of years. Had 2.4 times. Mechanical engineering major. 
And to your point, Seth, look at the bench running over to give some love to Love, Caleb Love giving some love to Will Manah. Look at the going over the right shoulder with the left hand. Will Manah. And act like, you know what, the best part? Act like he had been there before. Maji David Maji from Erie Community College joins the fun for Canisius. Chance to empty some of their bench just a little bit. Number 15 in Navy Blue. He's got the ball now. Young athlete from Nigeria. Nice board there from Liam. That's exactly who it is, though, it. too. That's Maji David Maji scrapping with Liam underneath. Yeah. A little bit of back and forth going on there. Tyson Ogeni has come on from Sweden. Wait, what did we say? Uh, Tommy Lloyd wanted his team to be gritty, and the walk-ons are <laughs> living up to it. All right, they got to call a play here for Liam. Oh, here it is. He called his own play. He Ooh. came up short. Look at racing to grab that rebound. Hustling Addison Arnold. Loses that one out of bounds. He called his own play. He did. <laughs> and, and, and he actually, it was right on target. He, he did shoot it from close to the logo. Caleb Love, 17 points, four rebounds, six assists. Nice back cut. Beautiful back cut. And... And a nice pass to the basketball by Maji David Maji. I just love saying that name. Kanisha is going to be happy with some things heading home to Buffalo. And Jim Christian did a nice job. Hats off to Jim Christian for what he did with all new players. Didn't have any. This is their first game, obviously. And I thought they showed out really well. They let it turn to zero. The Arizona Wildcats win their opener. Open the season 1-0. 93-64 the final score as they defeat Canisius. Some of the big stars in this one, Caleb. Oh, ready, good, yeah, yo, Pokemon. 